Dude, you're going to be so clipped out of context by hogs who don't understand what's going on. I mean, good luck. Did we just watch part two or did we skip it? No, we watched part two. Now that okay, we've got the basic done. knowing where we are and who the sparks are, I feel I can totally focus on the black perspective on issues of race. Very curious to see if I am reacted to differently as black Bruno than I am as white Bruno. I'm in this project to see if black people are just the same as white people. By becoming a black girl, I want to see if I can identify with other black kids and learn about their culture. Today, I'm going out to look for a job as white Brian and all white community. So he got divorced. And this is what he's doing. Murphy! Oh, God, that scared me. What the fuck? Sit your ass down. Get your ass in that seat. I that actually scared me, dude. I'm not chewing you out for my oral hygiene. Four jumpers in two months. Congrats, Murphy. You're the goddamn record holder. This is what these fucks from the Academy sent me. You're the goddamn patron saint of suicide. Is he going to say the M word in the end of this? Like, it's not good. Okay, okay. Dude, I can't. We have so much content. We have this now, too. Oh, my God. I just, I keep remembering that that exists, too. Just, wow. Wow, dude. Oh, Jesus. Wow, dude. It's so good. Community. I would like to see it. It will be easier for me as a white man to get a job because I'm white. When they see me, they'll see likeness. It'll be easier for me to fit in. Hey, you must be Brian. Brian. You're here for an interview. I sure am. All right, well, let me just take you over to a, t uh, a table and then we'll get you to fill out some stuff. Leo's Bar is an all white neighborhood, and I would like to be a bartender because alcohol brings out the truth. If you're a bartender, if black was brought up in a white surrounding when the patrons are drunk, I think it's much different than sober. You don't have a job now. Um, you haven't had a criminal record. We need to do a background check on you. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. You're white. <laughs> you know, I'm thrilled you guys interviewing me. Give me the chance for this. Oh, well, you know, once you're on, you're part of the family. I, so, you know. Uh, okay. I like that. Right. Yeah, I got the job. Okay. Thank you for this opportunity. And I promise I won't let you down. Oh, I Same know you won't. I know you won't. I know you won't. They so. told me, welcome to the family. They knew I was white when they said, welcome to the family. I'm in the Leo family. I'm in the Leo family. So I'm white now, so I'm in there. Today I went to the mall and I met Duran and Poetry, who are in charge of a slam poetry class. They knew that I was white, but I was still in black makeup. Do you know anything about that poetry, Jim? No! We teach poetry workshops. There's so many beautiful poems out there, but they're not performed right. We teach performance and writing skills. I, I like to write poetry, and I've never learned how to. I just, I've written it myself. If you write poetry, we're like, Wait. oh, you're in the house. I'm really excited about taking this poetry class because I want to know what it's like to be black. I want to immerse myself in the culture. Do you have any poems like? Like in my head? Or in your head, or do you have or any Or down that you would have memorized, only because the first class in these, right, we're going to have everybody, like, read, read something. Or anything. So and we can see where you are. Where you are, what we need to work on. Wow. And it's easier if you have it memorized. I've got an assignment, and I'm downright feeling intimidated. I've never tried to do slam poetry. It's scary for me to know that I've got so much potential to fail. Anything that'll like speak about you or right. something that you can memorize. Well, I can always do one tonight and just work on it. It'll have to be memorized. Yes, they know she's not black. Yes, they know. They know she's not black, but the other people won't. Apparently. Yeah. Okay. Please tell me she's gonna write slam poetry about being a black woman growing up in America. How oh, fuck. That's just like, this is too good. I just, the content gods have smiled upon us on this blessed day. Oh my fucking God. Every part of this show from top to bottom, up, down, left, right is so good. 
Today I went to several car dealerships to see if I'm treated any differently as a black person. I've spoken to black friends and they'll say that you don't know what it is to be the black man who's looked at with suspicion. Somebody looks at some motherfuckers in the chat enjoying this a little much. I got all of y'all Twitch names. <laughs> Me and they have hatred because I'm black. That will be soul shaking. Bro, is like this guy, it's this guy's fantasy. Like, this is great for him. He's enjoying every moment of this where he's like, he gets to be black for a day. You know, he's like begging. He wants. Like, he wants someone so badly to just, like, call him the N-word. Nut. Let me get the case for you. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate your time. What do we do, honestly, what do we do to our business today? That's how you know. That's how you know someone's so profoundly privileged where they're like, yo, come on, let me get a little bit of a hate crime, dude. Give me the juice, you know? Give me just a little bit of a hate crime. I want it so bad. It's kind of interesting. I was on the lot no more than 20, 30 seconds before somebody would notice me and come right over to me. What if you don't have such good credit? When I tell them that I have lousy credit, they tell me that I'm going to have to put more money down. I think that's rather standard. Didn't seem to me what? that uh, okay, what? was uh, keying in on my blackness. In general, I got excellent service and I'm finding that I'm treated exactly the same, whether I'm black or whether I'm white. How about you guys? What have you learned so I've far? Learned, I've learned a lot. Like learned what? A lot. I learned that, you know, as, as a black man, uh, you know, I buy my shoes. They just hand me the shoe and say, here, try it on. But my first day as a white guy, I go and buy some shoes. Hey. They take my foot and put it in the shoe. I bought golf shoes out of a golf pro shop before. Didn't happen. So, I mean, I, I'm not saying that it always happens, but it was just my first time, and I was like, wow. At the car dealership, as a black man, what I experienced is I'm getting the reaction from people that I usually get as white Bruno, and that's telling me a lot. From what I hear from you, I don't feel that you're getting the experiences that I go through on a daily. Bruno's been white all his life until these last few days, so he, he doesn't know what to look for or what to expect. If you're not used to it in your daily life, then you're not yeah, going to look for anything absolutely. new just because you have all black makeup. I just think the little things that you never think about is always on our mind as black men. What, what I totally believe is it's the individual, regardless of whether he's white or black. I'm going to come as Bruno as a black man, okay? Mm -hmm. And I'm going to show everybody courtesy. Mm -hmm. I'm going to deal with life the way Bruno does, mm -hmm. and I'm going to appear black. Mm -hmm. My theory is it starts with you know, personal responsibility. Oh, you wow. get out of life what you put into it. I come from a place of not expecting to be assaulted by racism. And maybe that's a huge difference. They are so aware of the fact. Dude, I love it. He's, uh, that's it, dude. This is the racism understander, folks. He put on blackface for two hours and, and now he knows. Hey, black people in the chat. Guess what? It's about your perspective, actually. I love that he also tries to like turn it into a, uh, it's because black people expect racism that they receive racism, which is great. That's a incredible take. Here's what it actually is. Because in his worldview, racism starts and finishes with someone calling him the N-word, okay? That's it. That's the problem. That's why he keeps saying it over and over again. Like, that's not how it works, dude. What the fuck? <laughs> like, no one has called me the N-word so far. Like, what? Perhaps it's because I just don't expect it. So, you know, it's personal responsibility. That they are black and that they are separate and they are different. Well, you said, uh, you know, you guys are going to get a lot more out of this than I am because, right. you know, you're going to be black right. and I'm going to be white. Right. Okay. Well, you said it was going to happen. Mm -hmm. You know, so far, I'm kind of weak. He's like, no, nah, I'm fucking killing it. Uh, so far, I haven't learned shit. I've just been saying the N-word more actually than i used to <laughs> saying it all the time you can't stop me waiting for somebody to go hey you know but it's not gonna but happen but it's you know it's well, not you gonna said. happen i really don't think that bruno is getting the black experience yet 
and I'm not sure if he's going to ever open his mind to it. Uh, you're saying you think you know that I started to experience something. I'm telling you, no. <laughs> no. Going to a poetry thing, and I don't have anything memorized yet, and I would have liked to. That's not so good if I needed to write a poem and, and memorize it. I really love words. I do. And like to me, you can never have enough adjectives. I want everybody to introduce themselves and tell me your favorite entertainer. My name is Latoya Higgs. My favorite artist is Mary J. Blige. My name is Cherie Busby, and my favorite entertainer is Prince. Okay, blessed. I'm an avid Michael Jackson fan. My name is Jonathan. My favorite performer is Dave Chappelle. Um, my name is Rose, and my favorite entertainer, I kind of love the Cranberries, so. The Cranberries. The cranberries. Diverse. Okay. Yeah, exactly, definitely. You only have one opportunity to make a first impression. So my first impression was like, I love the Cranberries. What was that? Whenever we do our poems, we have to stand up. I'm so glad it took me 30 years of being a black woman to realize all it took to avoid racist interactions was to simply have a better outlook on life. Who would have known my life would change so much? Just be that analysis. Thank you, white Bruno. <laughs> yeah, Bruno's got it. Hey, black people, Bruno's got it. He's looking out for you, okay? This is... I can't get over the fact that Ice Cube said this show was too powerful. Like, the truth it revealed was too powerful. Okay. I don't know how to face this. I'm standing in the mirror faceless. My mom is at my shoulder telling me to escape this. There's so many far before me with war life stories of prison and death. I'll take a deep ass breath. What, what, what is this that torments my existence? That removes the joy in every single instance? Whoa. Ooh, who got the idea that I was ready for this? I felt like a lamb in a lion's den. I'm okay, to be fair, they did, they did kind of do her dirty. Like, you put Bruno, Bruno in this situation, he's just going to say the N-word over and over again. Let's be real, okay? You put Bruno, Black Bruno in this situation, he's killing it. He's just... You put her in the situation, she's like, uh, I kind of think this is fucked up. I'm just going to go with it because the show expects me to, but I don't know what's happening. I'm always down for my black people, though sometimes they be acting so evil. Unbelievable how my patience remains. Though at times I feel an alien blood runs through these veins and this thought sustains. The alien is me. These people rock, and they're speaking about being black from their heart of hearts. <laughs> and I'm hoping to God that- He's crying! <laughs> ah, this show is so good! This is the best show ever, dude! What the fuck? Oh no, she's getting up. Oh no. Look, we gotta run this again. We gotta run this again. We gotta run that again. Me. These people rock, and they're speaking about being black from their heart. Heart of hearts. <laughs> oh. Oh. Oh no. Okay. Okay. What's she? What's she gonna say? And I'm hoping to God that this sounds black. Okay. Thank you. Many words. My life. The so simple complexities of a human psyche. To even relish in my thoughts of romantic stride. My skin to his, <sighs> my touch returned. A mutual undulation of want and reciprocal acceptability and performance. A ritual so profound, the taste of sex. The body, flush with hot and sticky fantastic. A basket of unbroken fruit, a dripping bouquet of red ripe woman. The pulp of the soul spread lavishly over the human chemistry when discovery and pleasure were encouraged. Thank you. Were you nervous? Yeah, I felt, I felt <laughs> no. that you were nervous. So yeah. this uh, you have a lot of big words. I have a lot of big words. I don't get, you right. know, and you have to know your audience and know that if you're speaking 
to an audience of people that not everybody's going to understand what you're talking about. That was hard. This project is so much more unnerving and probing than you can possibly expect it to be. So how was today for you, Rose? Yeah, I was just about to ask you. Yeah. It was incredible. Some of the most beautiful, intense poetry I've heard in a long time. Everything was just from the heart. Racism, prejudice, black lifestyle came up a lot because they were talking about being black. So did you get up and say anything? I did, but here I am in front of everybody and I'm like, I hope it at least is black enough to get through this class. Like, You know what, if I'd have got in there. Bro, this is literally like, what's the white dude in Atlanta? That is like married to the black woman. Does anyone know who I'm talking about? No, not Teddy Perkins. No. No, no, the fucking no, it's not Teddy Perkins. No, it's the the Juneteenth episode, dude, in Atlanta. Kind of like that's what it's reminding me of. What was the name of the fucking guy? Bruno and Whiteface in 2019? <laughs> Dude, stop. <sighs> Jesus Christ. Okay, let's just keep going. Dark First time. Dark I went with the dog. I was like shaking my socks. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's courage. Rose has a good head on her shoulder, and I think Bruno can take a page from from Rose's book. And, and yeah, with Craig Allen, let me see if I can find it. And learn that is one place i do not want to get found out uh, like oh really yeah. oh yeah no the only way i feel okay being oh, in there this, this, is this, if this, I yes. <clears throat> jim crow has the name of a man but is a ghost i am a man but jim crow is haunting me like in that movie poltergeist and I am stuck in a television like that little girl. Just get me out of here. I don't want to be in an electrical appliance. <clears throat> oh, but my point is moot. I have seen strange fruit loaded in this garden of Eden. We will kill the white man, and we will go home. But we're different men. We can't even talk to each other. We're different tribes. Men chained together are brothers. We are all one village. We cannot speak the same words. Listen, Mandinka. Those who speak other words, words of the Wolof, of the Sereri, the Fulani, talk to the man chained. This is an edit. This is not, I don't think this is, this is not from the, the show. I just wanted to show you the first part. Sorry. I just saw this on the Twitter trending page. That's why I was like not paying attention. Yeah. They edited it. <coughs> but yeah, left the streamer Hassan Piker face Christmas. We're buying a 2.7 million home, but Gen Z's favorite pundit says he wants to change the rise narrative about the left. The home thing is still going boys going can't escape it oh looking at cussy okay let's keep going my ass off they're doing something you feel like they would there. really like i don't feel like that would be respectful of me i don't know how i'm feeling right now because i want to strike up friendships 
And if something went wrong, like if they found out that I was white, somebody's not going to feel cool about it. I don't want to go in there again and do what I did. Just don't. My dad is always talking about how whites are treated differently than black people. But my generation now, we really don't see all that. We just see people. As long as you're cool with us, then we're cool with you. Oh my goodness, no. check it out. Oh my god. Wow, amazing. I'm going to be white today, so I want to go and do something only white kids do. Today, I'm going to etiquette class with Nick to see how well he blends in with white kids. Nice what? to meet what? you, Claudia. Claudia Rose, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Rose. Hi, I'm Claudia. Nice Nick. to meet you. Nick. Etiquette actually, it's not. He turned him into a TikTok kid. Oh, so you have someone to shoot up a school? Stop, dude. What the fuck? <laughs> fuck. It was not funny. That was very not funny joke, man. Wow. What the fuck is etiquette school? Not just rules. It's the way you behave, the way you're going to be accepted. Basically, it teaches you know how to eat at fancy restaurants and how to greet people and be polite. I want to see you pretend to eat your soup. Pretend, pretend you're, you're really eating. Pretend you're really eating. Really okay, you eat from the inside to the outside. Yeah. Jeez, Remember, to... when your mom used to feed you, it was like this? Yes. Okay, you guys are grown-ups now. I actually don't think Nick is enjoying himself at all. Okay, white people in the chat, is this something that white people do? Like, no, right? It's like... This is like, like I, I've never heard of this before. The fuck? Is this even something rich white kids do? I feel like. I know that you were still acting like yourself. Dude, chat's going crazy. A lot of, lot of white kids in here, dude. Hey, take notes, everybody. You see that? You see that? I asked the question to the white people in the room and chat lit the fuck up. It's on fire. This is now an unsafe environment, okay? The whitest chat in America. You do have a real vernacular that's quite, like, I mean, at least stereotypically black. Um, I'm always gonna be myself. Yeah? We're whiter than the Aiden Ross chat right now. We're not gonna be working with how you act. As in, like, enunciating and stuff like that. can't act white. You can't. Okay, so that's your opinion? Really you can't. I just don't, you know, really see no point into this racism thing. You know, I'm not the racist person, so all that stuff doesn't really matter to me. So what's kind of your, like, goal for this, then? Just to pass. Just to pass? <laughs> I'm here for the fun. He's like Today super will be young the first day too, that I work so. at Leo's bar. This little all white bar. There's a bartender. It's cool. I'm being the fly on the wall. Get to see a day in white. Oh, well, you want to establish a rapport with all these guys. If you take care of them, they're gonna take care of you. I have to speak proper grammar, or as we black community say, I have to speak white. Yes, see? Okay, I'm going to have to watch you. I want you must be a, re a real regular right here. Then I got into some conversation with a guy. There you go. It was so easy because they thought I was so white up in there. I just asked him a simple question. What is... I work for ultra-rich people as a private chef. It's not a movie. My boss prefers pot roast and meatloaf over Kobe and ice sculptures. What? I don't even understand what that means. It's the neighborhood, like. Yeah, well, it's pretty much so, a white area, so you don't have any problems. Oh, okay, fit right in. I grew up in this neighborhood, and this is one of the last somewhat unaffected bastions of middle class Caucasian America uh, inside Los Angeles. Nice quiet community. Uh -huh. okay. Most of the cities around this area have changed. Unaffected. Oh, brother. Oh, brother. Hey. I know we're in Los Angeles, but this is one of them good neighborhoods, if you know what I'm saying. My white friend, my white brother. That's right. 
significant. This is the one that's almost like a, it's been insulated for some reason. Wow. I kind of got that feel when yeah. I came through this neighborhood. And the neighbors wanted to was... stay that way. Exactly. They don't want a lot of change. They don't want a lot of building. They don't want a lot of immigration okay. because they've seen what's happened in the peripheral communities. Oh, okay. And it's taken the quality of life down. He just like went on and on. This is the last little white community. We want to keep it like this. In other words, this will be the place for you to move and bring your white family if you want to have your kids raised in a, in a, in a good neighborhood. This area up here somehow remained on top. Even with the makeup, I feel like he's way too tan for this dude to just be fucking ripping. You know what I mean? This seems a little sussy baka to me. This, this conversation just seems a little strange. It's like, do I think that, uh, you know, white people let it loose uh, in private? Certainly. But even with all the fucking makeup, he, he's, he looks a little too tan still. So, that's interesting. That's so, if you're interesting. looking for a safe place to raise your kids, you can't do better than this, I think. I think if I was in there and black, of course I wouldn't get that kind of information. But because he thought I was white, he had that comfort zone, he spilled his guts. I was really blown away for him to say all that to me. It was tough. I, I know there is some people like that, but you want to think of this as, as a much better place. Then again, I don't think he thinks anything he's saying is wrong. So maybe he's just like ripping it. <laughs>